Welcome back. I'm David the Good. For those of you who have looked at some of my videos and thought, man alive, I can't afford all those fruit trees. He's doing all this crazy stuff with planting rows and sticking fruit trees everywhere and, and I just don't have the budget for that. You know, fruit trees are like 20 bucks a piece or 25 bucks a piece. Don't worry, I wrote a book for you. It's called Free Plants for Everyone and I practice what I preach. I just bought trees this year because I needed to get them in the ground, but I'm also doing this. These are baby pomegranates, and I paid a grand total of $2. Because I bought a fruit at the store and I planted the seeds. For all these little trees, and I could have had a lot more if I had actually watered them consistently. But this is good enough. For two bucks, it's hard to beat. Let's pot them up. Now the first thing I'm doing is saving money on potting soil. No, I'm not making this into potting soil, but I am going to use it in a way that means less potting soil has to be purchased. I do this a lot, because potting soil is kind of expensive unless you buy it in bulk. When I had my nursery, I could buy big loads of it, and I had a good supplier, but lately, I haven't found a place where I can buy a ton of potting soil, so I'm buying it in small amounts in bags. So this right here is going to stretch that a little bit. Each one of these pots gets a good handful of these fall leaves and pine needles at the bottom. This won't hurt the trees. I've done this for years. and. It's never a problem. If you've got rotten wood, you can use that to stretch your potting soil. Like, you know, when you go out in the woods and there's a whole bunch of rotten material, like old pine trees and oaks that have gotten knocked over and rotten, you can go get your wheelbarrow and load up. But just the leaves in the bottom will help keep the potting soil from going down the bottom, but it doesn't really seem to take up much. Uh, like eat the nitrogen up. If I mixed it probably 50-50 with the potting soil, it might eat up the nitrogen in the potting soil, but just having it buried underneath is no big deal. And eventually it'll rot down into compost. And I like to have some of the, you know, a little bit of native soil in there too. Who knows what interesting, useful microorganisms might be in there. If you're doing big container gardens, like, Say you've got an old refrigerator and you want to turn it into a garden. You could go and get tons of leaves and sticks, yard waste, palm fronds, whatever you have available. Chop it all up and fill the bottom of it and then just put that much soil on top. And that works just great. And it means you have to buy a couple of bags of potting soil instead of having to buy like 20 bags. It really works quite well. I don't fill the pots all the way up to the top either. Leave a little bit of a rim so you have something to grab. If you fill them all the way up to the top, you're like, Neh. you know, you have to grab it like that. This is nice to be able to hook a few of them together, which you can do if you don't fill them all the way up with soil. And then we just take our little baby tree, stick it in. right now which means you not even have to water these in of course it's going to freeze in another day or so the weather's a little schizophrenic in the deep south we go back and forth between having days where it's in the 70s and 
then you'll get a drop down to 30 degrees overnight and then the next day it'll be 53. So I go back and forth between wearing shorts and having to wear a jacket. A little different than the tropics. And I know some of you up north are like, man, wish I could be outside in my shorts. I wish I could be planting something right now, but it does wreak havoc on the plant. So I've got to make sure that these little pomegranates, even though pomegranates can handle a zone eight climate like we have, they can't when they're little babies like this, they're tender. I started these indoors in my office by the sunny window and they're used to nice pleasant 70 something degrees if they go through a 30 degree night they're gonna probably not survive and I want these guys I saw a beautiful pomegranate tree the other day completely dormant because of the time of year uh, I only, only had a couple of red leaves hanging on it but it was a nice full size tree and I thought hey there we go that's a good harbinger because I've got these little seedlings and you always wonder will they live will they grow up and is this really the right place to plant these things and it's kind of nice to see something it's nice to you know have something like you bought a baby fig from Home Depot and you think is this really gonna do it I don't know it looks so small and then you go to somebody's house and you see a tree that's way over your head and loaded with figs and you say oh that's why I'm planting that little tree just gotta wait just gotta take care of it it will live it's gonna be okay There are plenty of trees that you can start from seed and get to produce pretty quickly. I've done this with dwarf pomegranates before. The little weeny ones, they're not particularly good to eat, but they're fun to grow. They're very pretty. And they were fruiting for me within two years. And these should be fruiting in probably three to four. With some things like peaches, it can be very fast if you're in a warmer climate. I had peaches bloom in 18 months from seed. That's fantastic. But there's other things like mulberries, which will take you 10 years. Or avocados may take you six or eight or 10. They take their time. I have one in the Great South Florida Food Forest Project. It's been there about eight years and it's bloomed once, has not made a fruit yet. But it did bloom once, so all hope is not lost. A lot of these things, you know, minimum investment, you can get a very good return on, and pomegranates are one of them. Look at that. The Lord sent some rain just to water these in, I guess. I'm sure I'm not that important, but it's a nice thought. Anyhow, thank you for joining me. If you want to learn how to propagate your own trees, I cover so many different fruit trees and a huge amount of plants. Everything from grafting to air layering to starting from seed in my book, Free Plants for Everyone. So check it out. And I'm going to go inside. And until next time, may your thumbs always be green. I buried my rabbit beneath the cherry tree One fine afternoon Someday I know that we'll meet again On a fruit salad spoon Laid my hamster to rest last night Beneath the pumpkin vine